All right, what's going on everyone? Fun electric beach cruiser bike for us to look at today. This is the 2021 Model E from Electric Bike Company. Big huge handlebars, big comfy seat, and a motor that peaks over a thousand watts. So it's a pretty strong bike. Also has some really nice high-end finishes. Now the buying experience from Electric Bike Company is a little bit different. You can go on their website and actually design the bike to your liking. So it's not a one size fits all bike. You can pick if you want fenders, racks, baskets, you can pick the color. It's uh, actually quite refreshing to see all those options that they offer. Now this bike has a few extra accessories on it. We'll go over those. And they arrive uh, at your door on a pallet. It ships on a pallet, 100% assembled. All you have to do is straighten out the handlebars and you're done. So no setup on this bike. That's a plus for a lot of people I know. So today I'm gonna walk us through the Model E, show you all the pieces and parts up close so you know what you get for your money. Then I'll show you some performance footage I took so you can see how it climbs hills and how fast it go with the throttle only. And then at the end, if you've ever seen my videos before, you know I, I do my best to try to give as much useful information as I can to someone who might be considering buying this bike. So I'll go through um, you know, what it's like to ride this bike and things that come up and little quirks about the bike. And I actually have a little bit of a list of things to cover that I think might be helpful to know. So we'll cover that at the end. And I think that's all, so let's get rolling. All right, well, there is the Model E from the Electric Bike Company. And one thing I do wanna to mention too is this bike is designed and built in the USA. They build the batteries, they build the wheels, they paint the frames, they do it all here. So kudos to Electric Bike Company for bringing some manufacturing back to the US. And I wish I had a sunnier day to show off this bike because it really pops in the sunlight. It's got some really nice finishes on this bike. And you're gonna hear me say that probably a thousand times in this video, so I apologize at the beginning. But it is finished off very nicely for the price point that this bike starts at. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, you can customize the bike. Uh, to your liking, you can change the wheel size, you can add seven speed if you want seven speed gears. This is a single speed. Add fenders, racks, baskets, uh, GPS trackers. There's a bunch of different options that you can throw in as you are you know, building the bike and adding it to your cart. This has some extra pieces on it. So we've got the front basket accessory on here. We've got the rear rack accessory on here. And actually, I think that might be the only two extras oh the fenders the fenders are extras as well the custom painted paint match fenders you know the fenders are like 79 bucks the basket's like 139 the rear rack's like 129 so when you start clicking on all those extra accessories it's going to start climbing in price a little bit and in addition to all the things you can add on as you're building the bike there's about three pages of accessories too on their website with different bags and baskets and dog carriers and cup holders bluetooth speakers even surfboard carrier rack things you can add onto the bike. So there's a ton of accessories that you can really customize these bikes. All right, well, let's start taking a look at some pieces and parts on this thing up close. Let's start here at the front. We've got cool looking white wall tires with the brown tread on them. It's called a Fat Frank and they are 26 by 2.35. That's your tire size. And they're polished out beautifully. It's so nice looking. Even the spokes polished out nice. Even the little end cap on the uh, quick release skewer. It's not black plastic, it's metal. It's polished out. I can see my reflection in the thing. Electric Bike Company's wheels are built using double walled rims, 13 gauge stainless steel spokes and brass nipples. Stainless steel hardware and integrated bearings are used in the headset, bottom bracket, pedals and hubs. This ensures longevity over time by keeping the components rust and corrosion free. Everything's polished out so nice on this bike that's why i wish it was a sunnier day so you could really see this thing pop in the sunlight for your brakes you've got hydraulic brakes on this bike they are a 180 millimeter disc on there and they are bengal aries 3. i've had these on other bikes they're great these are really nice brakes they work very well this bike does have the optional fenders paint match fenders on here they're metal fenders they attach very nicely again it's not you know just a plastic thing that clips around the fork it's a nice metal bracket metal fenders it even has this uh, custom mud flap on there which it looks like it's got reflective paint on it as well so it'll reflect for you no front suspension on this bike at all you do feel that when you're going down the road if you get onto a bumpy section of sidewalk or road you definitely feel the bumps with no front suspension fork on there this bike has the optional front basket on it and man does it really bolt on there i mean this is a pretty beefy mounting bracket here so that's not going anywhere it is really really sturdy and that is a huge basket this thing is ginormous you can fit a ton in here 
Um, I like the, the metal bars and then you got the, me the mesh inside. They actually sell on the website too a liner, like a fuzzy liner you can put in here um, that is custom made in, I don't know, maybe carry your chihuahua or whatever you want to throw in there. The headlight is up here on front of the basket. Normally it's, I think, mounted where the basket is, but when you get the basket, you have to change the location of the headlight. So it's on the front there. You've got the electric bike company logo established 2014. That looks pretty slick on there. It's a very nice looking basket. Now behind the basket, you can see the wires are just, I mean, that's beautiful. Whoever did this, I mean, everything is just so buttoned up nice and neat. And you got this like, I don't know what you want to call this, like a braided brake line kind of mesh stuff over all the wires. It's just very, very clean looking. I love this. That, that's great. A lot of times you'll see electric bikes where the, the wiring up here is just a mess of wires going everywhere. This is a very clean look and the handlebars are beautiful. They're huge. I, I got to tell you, the first time I got on this, it gives you the feeling of if you jump up into a big truck or a bus and they have those gigantic steering wheels. That's kind of what I felt like grabbing a hold of these things. They're so big and wide. It's like you're grabbing a hold of one of those gigantic bus steering wheels. But the bars are polished out. Again, beautiful. I'm not sure if, if the, um, the other bikes, because this bike comes also in black and red. And I, those ones might be, they might have black handlebars. I can't remember off the top of my head. But this, these are just beautifully polished out. Same with the, the front stem here, which is adjustable. Um, I did notice that when you have the basket on here, you can't really lower this stem down much further because it's going to hit right here on the basket. So, but I mean, that's where I ride it anyway, having it tilted up and back. So wasn't an issue for me. I don't know that you'd really need to stretch it much further out that way, but just note that you can't really lower this handlebar much down much further with the basket here. But the wires are tied nice and neat here and uh, come out the bottom, go inside the frame here, and then you really don't see them you know, the rest of the way back on the bike. So the wire management is just beautiful on this bike. Everything's hidden nicely inside the frame and when it's exposed, it's tied and, and wrapped very nicely as well. This is your battery charging port right here. Battery is up under here. It releases out, um, you know, out, the, out the bottom. You have to put the key in the other side, turn this little lever right here to release the battery and then it drops out i can put a video up of me pulling that battery out if you want to see how it comes out of there paint job on the frame is super nice you've got very subtle logos on this bike i like that it's not plastered with logos everywhere you got this one simple little electric bike logo here there's there was one on the front of the basket and then you've got this little logo right here and kind of a funky little one on the back of the seat. And that's really it. There's no other gigantic logos on the bike, which is, I know a lot of people appreciate that. The standard battery pack is a 48 volt, 12 amp hour battery. However, this bike has the optional upgrade to 14 amp hours. And I can throw up on the screen the estimated ranges of each one. The seat is, again, look at the, I mean, the clamp here for the seat and the seat post. I've been so careful raising and lowering the seat because I don't want to scratch this. It's again polished out beautifully. Everything is polished to perfection on this bike including the front chain ring which is huge as well. I think it's a 58 tooth front chain ring and again everything's polished so nice. We got metal pedals here that say what do they say on them? Union and then they've got really nice rubber inserts on them so I like these pedals a lot. And this front chain ring is massive and it looks gorgeous on there as well. Now the seat on this bike is absolutely massive. It is the biggest seat I have ever seen on a bicycle. It is absolutely huge, I, which is fantastic. I love it. I love a big, huge, soft, comfy seat. This one's got springs in the back. It's super thick, super wide. It's a delight to sit on the seat. And I wanted to show you this. I usually go out and purchase aftermarket seats for all of my bikes. And I buy like the biggest plush seat I can find. And here is one that I purchased off Amazon. It was a, the biggest one I could find. And it's, it's smaller than this one from Electric Bike Company. It's, I mean, the brown seat here from Electric Bike Company, it's a full like 12 inches wide. And it's awesome. I mean, there's no suspension on the bike. So this, that seat helps out a ton. So I'm really digging the seat. And right underneath the seat here, you can see you've got extra taillights. So they put on two extra super bright taillights right here. And then you do have a third taillight here at the back of the bike. And I wanna go turn them on for you really quick here. So power on 
and then if you just hold the up button for a minute it'll turn on your lights so the there's your front light there and then you've got these glowing right now there i mean they're very bright even in the daytime you can see them very easily and then the back light flashes so you've got these two tail lights and then the third flashing one at the back they're the the ones that mount here they're a little bit harder to see from directly behind the bike if you've got a bag on the back or bags on the side it's going to be a little bit hard to see those lights i think they're going to be more visible from the side and another thing i want to point out too is they're not brake lights they're only tail lights they so if i go up here and pull the brake lever nothing happens nothing else lights or gets brighter or flashes or anything it's it's taillight only function out of these these are such nice lights right here i mean they're so bright they look very nice i my wish list for this is two things i wish they were relocated to like maybe right here so they were at the back of the bike and then if you had you know bags up here on the rack it wouldn't be blocking them and then my second wish list item would be that they're brake lights as well so when you pull the lever they flash or get brighter and then my third thing would be why not make them turn signals as well that'd be really cool to have a turn signal on each side here so uh, maybe they'll make some of those advances here in the future but for right now they are just taillights so this bike also has the optional rear rack and it has if you can see it stamped on there the mik or the mic system which is a it, it's this mounting bracket stuff in here right so they sell on the website bags and baskets and crates and all kinds of stuff that can be put onto this rear rack and that mik system allows you to just click it on and click it off really fast so you don't have to worry about you know bolting it on or using velcro straps to tie it down it just pops on and pops off with this little key thing you, you put here in the back so kind of a unique cool little uh, accessory system on this bike making it easier for you to get bags and racks and things on and off the bike quickly so for the hub motor on this bike you know they don't really state on the website if it's a 750 or a 500 or uh, they don't really name it they just say that it's a thousand watt peak and that's definitely true i mean i was regularly seeing this bike go over a thousand watts i think 1180 something was about the highest i saw it go it's a very powerful bike plenty of power to get up the hills plenty of power to take you down you know the straight stretches moving right along really quick you'll see in the performance footage how fast this thing actually goes but let's keep moving along through the components here for a second so you'll see it's a single speed bike they do offer the option you know when you're designing your bike you can make it a seven speed if you want but i mean i didn't really have any issue with the single speed it's got so much power in this motor that i mean when you get to a hill and it's too hard to pedal and you smash that throttle it just takes right off so i didn't really see the need for the seven speed actually now this bike is also equipped with an alarm system which is right there behind the, the chain ring. It's wired directly into the bike, so it runs off the battery from the bike. And you get the little key fob here, so you can arm and disarm the alarm. It is super loud, crazy loud. I'm gonna punch the button so you can get a feel for it. I'll turn the volume down. That hurt my ears. That's gonna get a lot of people's attention if someone tries to steal your bike. But let's come around to the other side because I want to show you the kickstand. Massive kickstand here in the middle of the bike. It works very well. Um, they do have a mounting plate right here too. It looks like you could move the kickstand back uh, to the back of the bike if you wanted it back there instead because, you know, as with every kickstand that's mounted in the middle, the pedals hit it when you try to back up the bike in a small space. But minor gripe. I do like the kickstand. I think they put it there because they want the bike to be better balanced when you have you know heavy cargo on the front and the back of the bike and just a few more things to go through let's go up here and take a look at the display so you can see what that looks like it's the lcd 8h display it's a very nice looking display i, I do like this one a lot and you can see you've got beautiful leather grips here with their you know company branding on there and then if i come around the side you can see that it's got this nice white stitching on the grips too it looks it looks really cool actually i like that a lot you have a thumb throttle here all your pedal assist and menu buttons over here and that's really let's go all that's going on up here on the handlebars there's no other buttons or anything um there's not a bell either i was surprised at that i didn't see i didn't see one in the packaging either no bell so i may have to add one so i don't run people over on the greenway but that is all the pieces and parts so now let me show you some quick clips of what the performance is like on this bike i think you might be a little shocked so let's take a look at that
All right, check out this very elegant cruiser bike. The finishings on this thing are just so nice. And I got the white because I thought maybe my lady would really like this one. You know, she likes having the basket on the front and that's a huge basket to use. And it's a step through and it's got a low seat height and it just looks very classy. But you know what, this bike, the looks can be deceiving because this thing is quick. This thing moves on out, I mean, I'm a little surprised at how fast this bike is for being this unassuming beach cruiser and then you jump on it and hit the throttle. I mean, it takes right off. And let's see, we're going 22, three, four, five, six, seven. Holy crap, 28. 28 miles an hour. It hit 29, 29 miles an hour. Throttle only. I mean, this thing's fast. This is like one of the faster bikes I have. Faster than the majority of the fat tire, you know, 750 watt fat tire e-bikes I have. This thing's quicker. Probably the skinny tires, less rolling resistance. And I mean, that motor peaks over a thousand. So this bike is kind of a sleeper. I mean, looking at it, you wouldn't think it would go that fast, but holy cow, it's got some power. All right, we made it to hill climb and uh, I'll put it in pedal assist five just so we're in the top one, but it shouldn't matter. I've, I've altered my settings a little bit, so it doesn't really matter what pedal assist. I mean, I always get full throttle now. All right, well, let's give it a go up the hill here, throttle only. I've been doing timed hill runs so I can do accurate comparisons. So I'll throw up on the screen, you know, how long it takes the average bike to get up this hill and we'll see how this one compares, but we're off. I can already tell this thing's uh, pretty strong. It's at 1144, 1150 watts. So over 1100 watts it's putting out, flying up this hill. This is, I can already tell this is one of the stronger up the hill, which is shocking. Wow, that thing didn't skip a beat, man. This is strong. This thing has some power. I've re de-restricted it, of course. So I'm getting the full potential out of this thing, but holy cow, this is a, this is a very powerful bike. <laughs> and again, you wouldn't think it looking at it. All right, well, let's go for a throttle only top speed run here and see what we get. And then maybe I'll add in pedaling at the end and see if I can go any faster. Uh, we're going into some headwind, but still cruising right along. 28, 29. Throttle only, 29 miles an hour. Let's pedal. 30. 30 miles an hour. This is crazy. 31, saw it hit 31. Wow. This bike is impressive power wise. Very, very impressive. I can't believe I just pedaled at 31 miles an hour. Okay, lady, whenever you're ready. Wow. It's easy. Easy, right? <laughs> yeah. Woo. Can you get your feet down pretty good? Yes. Okay, is that, is that the lowest bike you've been on? Yeah, I think so. Wow. Okay. Okay. So overall I found the Model E to be very nimble, very powerful, very comfortable to ride. Also very accessible with the low step through height and the seat that goes all the way down to 31 inches. I mean that's something that shorter riders can really appreciate. I think the buying decision on the Model E might just come down to whether or not you want a beach cruiser style look for your e-bike. Alright well as you can see this bike has a very good amount of power and that is probably the first thing I'll say in my what you need to know about this model e-bike that is this bike is a sleeper man it doesn't look like it would be as powerful as it is it is a very powerful bike now when it arrives to you it's programmed as a class 2 bike and it, you know it tops out at 20 miles an hour and that kind of leads me into the the next thing i want to tell you that you need to know about this bike and that is up here in the display and the programming and everything so let's take a look at the display again you can see that it's it says PAS off so you're whenever you turn this bike on your pedal assist is off 
doesn't work. Doesn't matter if it's, you know, you can bump it up one, two, three, four, five. It's just off. It took me a good bit to figure out how to turn the pedal assist on. And the way you do that is you just hold the down arrow for a few seconds and you'll see that PAS is now, that thing is gone. So now your pedal assist is functioning. So that's how you turn the pedal assist on. Hold the down arrow for a few seconds. So it took me actually some research and uh, searching to try to figure out how to do that. So I finally figured that out. The next thing is, um, you know, it comes programmed as a 20 mile an hour bike. And I went in the settings and monkeyed around with some stuff and kind of took the restrictions off. So I'll show you what I did. I don't recommend you do it, but I will show it to you. So you got to turn the screen off and then turn it back on. And then within a few seconds, you have to hit the up and down together. And that'll take you into the settings menu. So the first thing here is your speed limit. I bumped it up all the way to the max, 72 kilometers an hour. That didn't do anything to change the performance of the bike, just so you know. The settings that made the biggest impact were uh, P3 and C4. Now those are having to do with your throttle settings. So the C4 setting just basically gives you all of the power, gives you all of the throttle out of the bike, I believe. And then the, the P3, I think that is the one that ties your throttle to your pedal assist. So I, I changed those. You can see what I changed them to right there. But let's get back out of here. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more. So when the bike comes to you, see when I turn the bike back on, PAS off. So you know, you're, every, every single time you get on this bike, you have to turn the pedal assist on. Uh, that P3 setting, I believe, is what unties the throttle from the pedal assist. So when you get this bike and you're in pedal assist one and you hit the throttle, you get a limited amount of power. You get level one throttle and then if you bump the pedal assist up to two three four your throttle gets more and more and more power by changing that p3 it you know i have full throttle now regardless of what the pedal assist is set at and then changing that c4 setting i think that's what really just allowed the juice to flow here and that's why you know if, if you bought this bike and you can only go 20 miles an hour and you're like how the heck was citizen cycle going 28 29 miles an hour well that's how i did it changed that setting and that just kind of took all the restrictions off again that's what i did that's so i mean i wanted to show kind of the full potential you could get out of the bike that's why i changed those i wanted to kind of max it out but again don't recommend you do that i'm sure the electric bike company doesn't recommend you do that when you get these electric bikes they're programmed from the factory to uh you know probably for longevity to make sure your battery is protected the motor is not going to burn out so change settings at your own risk but um i was i was watching other videos on this bike and i was like how the heck are they going 28 miles an hour i just i just had to figure it out and that's kind of what i figured out all right so the next thing i was going to mention i already mentioned it and that is you know every time you turn the bike off and on you've got to turn your pedal assist back on i'm not sure why they have it set like that maybe for some kind of safety reason i'm not sure why you wouldn't just um you know, make it so when you turn the bike on, the pedal assist is at zero, and it's essentially off. But you do have to turn the pedal assist on every single time you restart the bike. Okay, what else is important to know? No suspension on the bike. You know, and I, I point that out because if you live in a spot where there's, you know, a lot of bumpy sidewalks or roads, you're going to feel the bumps on this bike. The seat is super plush and is awesome, but I mean, you're still... You know, on the greenway when I was hitting those ripples in the pavement where the roots had kind of bumped everything up, I mean, it, it bounces you a little bit, having no suspension. So keep that in mind. What else to know? The, uh, the taillights, again, they're just taillights, no brake light function. The, I want to point this out too, the single speed. Now you've got the option when you're building or designing your bike, you can change it to seven speed. But I mean, I honestly don't know if I would waste the money doing it. It was fine with the single speed. I didn't have any problem with the single speed it's got so much power to get you going from a stop you know if it's hard to pedal get going you just hit the throttle a little bit and it you know gets you up to speed and then same thing when you come to a hill you just give a little bit of throttle it goes right up the hill i had no problem with the single speed i i don't even know if the seven speed would be worth it most people tell me in the comments too when they buy an e-bike that they they only use, they like they put it in like sixth or seventh gear and they just keep it there the whole time anyway. So I feel like the seven speed would be unnecessary, but you know, if you feel you need it, go for it. It's nice that they give you the option. 
and I think an important thing to bring up regarding the bike's alarm system is that it's wired directly into the bike. So this alarm right here runs off of the bike's battery. So that's good in the sense that, you know, if you bought an aftermarket alarm, you'd have to worry about keeping the batteries updated in it. So it's working. This, you don't have to worry about that because it's wired directly into the bike, uses the bike's battery. However, that does pose the problem of if you, you know, take the battery out of the bike, you have no alarm. So if you park it at your house, remove the battery to take it inside or park it at work, take your battery out to take it inside to charge, you don't have an alarm system on the bike. So something to just keep in mind. All right, everybody, I am running out of daylight, so I gotta wrap this up, but that was the Model E from Electric Bike Company. I'll put a link to the bike in the description below, also a link to their website so you can get there easily. And thank you to Electric Bike Company for sending this bike out to me, give me a chance to ride and test and review and put some information out to the e-bike community, much appreciated. So if you're in the market for a powerful beach cruiser bike, give Electric Bike Company's website a look. They have a bunch of different models to choose from and all those customization options as well. If there's specific questions you got on this Model E that I didn't cover, put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, I hope you got some useful information out of this video if you're considering this bike. And uh, if so, do me a favor, click subscribe, click the bell. And that is all for today. So thank you so much for watching.